So what will two GPUs do for you? If you're talking about machine learning and deep learning, quite a bit. If you're talking about video games, not so much. In these days, anyway. These days, the additional RAM that you have on these kinds of GPUs, and even putting multiple of these GPUs together, just does not help as much on a gaming system. However, for machine learning, there's really no discussion. Multiple GPUs will definitely speed up your training, especially if you're dealing with larger data. If you're looking to shave a few seconds off of your already three second training of uh, Fisher's Iris data set, probably not going to happen. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about two GPUs. Now, you can also use things like Horovod and others to, to both vertically and horizontally scale so that you have a large number, 40, 50 GPUs working on a single task. I'm talking more about what you would do on a single computer. Now to demonstrate this, I'm going to use a Lenovo ThinkStation E920 and we'll compare that running in one GPU versus two GPUs. It has two Quadro RTX 8000s on it. And also definitely a big thank you to Lenovo who loaned me this computer to make this video and a couple of others on my YouTube channel. So I am going to demonstrate this now on the ThinkStation P920, which has dual Quadro RTX 8000s. This is running Ubuntu. This is how this computer comes pre-configured for this. And Ubuntu is not required. You could do this in Windows just fine. I've run the same program I'm going to show you in Windows as well. There's nothing here that needs to be run in a Docker image or anything that crazy. So I'm going to my GitHub repository and I am going to my present and then YouTube. I'll have a link to this in the description, but GPU and Kira's dual GPU. So this program demonstrates how to actually get faster performance with two GPUs. I do have, let me go ahead and zoom this just slightly. I do have a Colab link here, and we could certainly open this up in Google Colab and run it with their GPUs. And I do have some benchmark numbers at the bottom that show the results of running this on single GPU, multi-GPU. In fact, let's take a look just at the whole file first, and then we'll download it and actually run it on this computer using dual GPUs. So I set up basically to run the cats versus dog data set, which is a computer vision data set. You can specify the number of GPUs there. We'll get back to that in a second. I do have some timings down here. So this is running on a variety of different GPUs that I have access to. The dual Quadro RTX 8000 on the, the P920 that I'm running here got the absolute best time. If you're running on something like Google Colab, if you're paying for Pro, you're getting 24 minutes, so a bit more time. And if you're using just the free version of Google Collab, you're going to be waiting for over an hour to get this to get this trained. So let's look at how we use two GPUs. Now there's generally two architectures that you go at when you want to use two GPUs. Data parallelization is the is usually what I'm I'm using. That means I'm basically using multiple GPUs to train exactly the same model but just more mini batches quicker. So it's able to get more training done because it's got two GPUs training on it. This requires that you duplicate the data across the GPUs that you're training on. The other approach is that you literally fold both of your GPUs or as many of your GPUs into one gigantic model. And this is done frequently in research where they're training these extremely large models and it just won't fit all into one GPU. I have 
really not done much with that. I would say definitely your data parallelization, just making training go faster on something that could run just fine on one GPU, but you just want it done faster, is what you're going to most commonly see. So let's go ahead and get this file from GitHub. Uh, you can do that any any of a variety of ways. I usually just click raw, save it as, and I'm just going to save it here to my user directory. Then launch the terminal. Now this assumes that you already have TensorFlow completely installed and compatible with the GPU. I made another video where I set it up literally on this computer, so you can you can see that if you're interested. I'm going to do conda activate TensorFlow and then Jupyter Notebook. Okay, and here you can see it, Kira's dual GPU. I am going to go ahead and open that. Again, let's zoom in a tad. First part I give you here is basically going to scan your system and see what GPUs you have available. Now the example output that I have that you'll see on GitHub is from this very computer. So you'll get essentially this output here, but I'm going to go ahead and run it just to make sure everything is going as I expect, and we'll, we'll explain that output in a moment. Okay, it is running, and there's all the GPUs. I have a ton of them. No, actually, I only have two. So it's showing the, G, the CPU, and sometimes you will want to specifically tell it to run things on the CPU. So it's, it's telling you about that. This computer does have two physical CPUs. However, they both don't show up separately. You're just thinking of the CPU sort of as, as one unit because the CPUs are very tightly integrated compared to a GPU. For the GPUs to have as tight of integration as the CPUs, you need to put an NVLink or something, and even then it's not, it's not as tightly coupled as a multi-CPU system. So there's also XLA. I have not worked with XLA. This is a higher performance mode that TensorFlow is capable of providing. It's relatively new. You'll also notice you lose most of your memory in the process of using it. So, but 16 gig is still pretty, pretty much, but I'm losing the 40... 43 plus gigabytes that these high-end quadro cards have on them. And XLA, by the way, stands for, I forget what the X stands for, extreme or extended, but the LA is linear algebra. So this is a higher speed method that, that TensorFlow makes available for you. I'm curious, has anybody worked with XLA. If, if you have, let me know in the comments. Would you be interested in, in me doing a video on XLA? Like I said, I've mostly avoided it up to this point, but it might be something might be something interesting. These are the two GPUs that we're going to be using here is the, the GP0 and 1. Those IDs are very important. So I'm going to run this part of it. This is going to download the cats versus dogs data set. I already have it, so it doesn't have to really download it. That's why that went pretty quick. Kira's, and this is one thing that I will definitely say I like better about Kira's than PyTorch, is that this is just automatic. GPU support, even multi-GPU, is so very much automatic. You basically just have to set up a strategy, and the strategy was created up here where I have the GPU 1 and 2. I'm setting a batch size, 32. You can go bigger on your batch sizes, and that often helps on multiple GPUs. So it's, it's, it's kind of an interesting trade-off. Some training problems really benefit from smaller batch sizes, the mini batches, but the smaller you make that batch size, the less benefit you're going to have for a multi-GPU system. I'm going to use both of these. I let I made it so that I could specify either running it with one or the other so that I can actually really test the single GPU versus multi-GPU. And by the way, even if you have two twin GPUs, one can definitely be faster than, a, uh, than the other. 
what that typically, and usually not by much, but what that will typically mean if you're noticing a large difference between the two is just their placement in the system. Mm. Proximity to the CPU is supposed to have something to do with that. I have not experimented with that. And then probably even more importantly is heat. If you've got a hot GPU, if one of them is hot just because it cannot cool itself, particularly if you're not using a higher end like a Quadro or the new A6000 that's, that's RAM where it's forcing the air out the back of the computer, if it's just blowing it around in the case like your, your 30 series or most G-forces, you can end up with one GPU being much hotter than the other and then it ends up throttling. So that's something to experiment with to get an idea. And obviously monitor your temperatures as well with the, um, the uh, NVIDIA SLI, NVIDIA SMI utility from the command line. I use that a lot. Once you have set up this mirrored strategy with the GPUs that are available, now you can run this part and it begins to actually train this. So it takes it a little bit of time to start up. I can hear the fans on my two GPUs speeding, speeding up. We are going to run this for five epochs, learning rate of uh, 0 0.01. The other thing I'll show you too is this little equation here, the batch size. This is the number of GPUs in the sink. So we're, we're basically multiplying the batch size out across the GPUs. I've seen that as a pretty common construct for, now this, this, this does make the times that I have a little bit uh, apples to oranges, but even with giving the multi-GPU system additional work to do, it still goes very fast compared to the single GPU system. Okay, it has started, but it's, it's training quite quickly. I've seen this thing run on Google Colab where I'm just literally waiting for it to go to the next step number. Now, I'm not going to take you through the whole step because we'd just be sitting here for 15 minutes, but let's talk about some of these numbers that I have. I think this is pretty interesting to look at this one versus this one. So this is the same system. This is the P920. This is using both of these RTX 8000s at once. This is using just one. It's not exactly linearly scalable, and that's probably due to my own coding and not tuning it, but this is really pretty good. The fact that we are, I mean, if you multiply 15 or 16 times 2, that'd be about 32 minutes, but it, the fact that you're going down from 26 minutes to 16 minutes is really pretty good. And then this shows you just some of the other types of, of GPUs that you get available. Titan RTX is on another system I have, the Tesla V100. That's in the cloud. That's Google Collab Pro. And then this is a laptop that I also have from Lenovo. This is a Quadro RTX 5000. Does it in about 50 minutes. And then Tesla T4 takes considerably longer. So you can see, if you throw two of these Quadro cards at it, you can, you can definitely get your training times down pretty good. Thank you for watching this video, and if you're interested in deep learning, GPUs, other things such as this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video. Thank you very much.